Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm today's host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us are two freshmen and NCAA All-Americans from the University of Louisville. They were huge contributors in Louisville's fourth place finish at this year's 2023 Women's NCAA Championships. Today, we are sitting down with freshman power duo, Ella Welch and Julia Dennis. Ladies, how's it going? Happy to be here. Excited. Yeah, super excited. Um, glad the school year is wrapping up, entering the summer. Super excited for long course and build our way up back into short course training in a few months. both done with school at this point yes i'm taking a summer class right now but i mean bulk of it yeah it's finished i'm done <laughs> <laughs> no more no summer okay uh, yeah i mean yeah so one summer class between the two of you it doesn't sound so bad um speaking of of just long course that's a good entry point i think you know your freshman in college um did either of you train at Louisville last summer, um, or, you know, did you come early to train and, or can you just tell me about your long course experience? I, I feel like just cause everyone's high school and club e experience can differ so much. Um, what, what is your relationship like with long course? So I did come early last year and I swam with Cardinal Aquatics. I'm from Louisville and I've swam at the university of Louisville. So our setup has kind of been the same in regards to like, aerobic and VO2 and our pace. So that wasn't completely new, but the intensity was definitely increased significantly. And I focused a little more on my stroke, on my sprint, than doing some more distance practices or IM practices that I would do with my club. But other than that, other than the intensity and yardage, it was pretty similar to what I was used to. Um, I, on the other hand, did not come early last year. I'm from Oxford, Mississippi, and my hometown actually does not have a long course pool. So um, I did a handful of long course meets just kind of in my club career, but that just consisted of me pulling up to a long course pool and jumping in for the first time since the last long course meet that I had. Um, so that's probably been one of the bigger changes that I've had like since starting college is just we train long course year round in some capacity. So just kind of getting used to that. And especially now that we're doing it every day um, has been something to get used to, but I really like it. It's still kind of a novel idea to me. So I've been enjoying it and it's lots of fun. So Julia, I heard that you got your 50 and 100 freestyle Olympic trial cuts this past weekend at the Indy Cup. And not only did you get your Olympic trial cuts, but you are the first Mississippi swimmer to do so in something like over two decades. Can you shed light on this? Um, yeah, sure. So I was obviously thrilled to get to do that, just be able to do it. I tried really, really hard in 2021 to get a wave one cut. Um, I went to a meet in May and I think I swam the 50 free, like between time trials, takeouts. I think I swam it six times in one meet. <laughs> um, did not get it. So to just finally be able to do it this All year and have that experience was super exciting and um, feels good to do it for not for the state, but you know what I mean? Just kind of not, there's not a lot of attention on Mississippi swimming. So it feels good to be able to represent the state in that way. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I feel like, uh, we talk a lot about obviously the bigger swim states, Texas, California, Florida, Indiana, et cetera. Um, but yeah, so somewhere like Mississippi doesn't get a whole lot of swim coverage. Um, that's super cool. Uh, Ella, I'm kind of curious. You grew up swimming at Cardinal Aquatic. Was mm. 
was Arthur Albiero's wife, whose name is escaping me right now, was she your Amy? The coach. It was Amy your coach in high school? When she was my coach when I was really young from I want to say when I was probably eight when I first got on the team, eight and nine, and then switched around groups a little bit. And then when I was probably 12 and 13, she was my coach again. Um, but once I hit freshman year of high school, I was with a bunch of different coaches. But it was nice to train under Amy for those few years. I stand by that her practices were probably the hardest on the team. Oh. Yeah, so can you <laughs> – okay, I guess first of all, what does those consist of? Were there any ones you still remember to this day? Every Monday we would do animal kick, and it'd be some number of 75s all-out kick. Oh, that was burn the legs. And then we – there's this one practice, and I would still – I was – more well-rounded than I am now. And we would just do this 500s and thousands freestyle. Just, I think it was so like three 500s, two 1000s, just like do it. And I couldn't even count that high at that point in time. And to have to swim that distance and not even know how to count it, it was, I was in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of shambles during that time in my life. And I was 12. Um, but, <laughs> Everything was easier from then on. <laughs> um, ouch. Yeah, yeah, that sounds hard. <laughs> having having to do it, not being able to count it. Just, <laughs> did she just like stick a kickboard in or throw one at you to be like, all right, stop now? <laughs> I was probably so far behind. I would stop at the wall every so often, look around and be like, oh, everyone else is still going. Yes, I'll. <laughs> keep pumping the gas and just keep <laughs> swimming for another hundred and stop again and look around. But there was no way I could have <laughs> a single thousand. There was no way. Did, were, were the other athletes in the group your age also? Yeah. Or okay. a year older, year younger. Okay. But yeah, you guys were all same age range. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, how do you feel like they compare to Arthur's practices? Oh, well, Let's just say I'm in much more of a sprint kind of group now. And if I'm doing a 500, I'm either in trouble or we're on a completely different path. Um, if I'm swimming a thousand, hopefully it's a thousand skips and it's for warm up where I only have to really count a 200. Um, <laughs> but I mean, not, I used to do a bunch of IM, used to do a bunch of more distance kind of aerobic focused. And now, you know, you get to college and it's a lot more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Centered. Specialized. On, yes. Yeah, specialized. Oh, specialized. That's the word. Specialized on what I'm good at and what I swim more often. So speaking of which, uh, who I am curious who your primary coach is, if you have one um, on a day-to-day -day basis or if, if you guys bounce groups, I'm assuming you do a lot of your training together, but maybe I'm wrong in that assumption. Mm -hmm. So we actually call our, our main coach is Brian Tansel. Um, he's our sprint coach and there's a pretty good sized group of girls who are in the sprint group together. We call ourselves the sprint sesses. Um, <laughs> we have Sisterhood we of the lot. traveling sprints. Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. That <laughs> You can use that. that one down. <laughs> we, we like to come up with new ones, but um, Brian's our coach and we do get to do a lot together, which is a lot of fun. And I've never had the kind of like specialized training like that where, I mean, everyone will split into different groups. And so it's cool to be able to work primarily on sprint freestyle because that's what I do. So <laughs> I've been enjoying that and Brian's great. Nice. Uh, what do you feel like, and I, this is a question that you can both answer, but what do you feel like the biggest difference was coming into your freshman year at Louisville, um, coming into, you know, just the college environment generally where you are, you do have a lot more specialized training and I'm guessing, you know, you're not doing five hundreds and thousands, but mm -hmm. the intensity of the work that you are doing is probably pretty different than, than what you're used to on a club practice. Yeah. Um, the only word, and I mean, you just said it was intensity for me when we showed up. I mean, as a group, like our, 
women's team would get together and we do some swims together before we actually started. We do dry lands. We'd run a little bit before our big bulk of hard six week training starts. I mean, you show up for that first week of really intense training and I don't think I was ready for it. I don't know if any of the freshmen were really ready for how it was going to kick our butt, but even the seniors were telling us that it doesn't get much easier. You know, I was like, Oh, that fills me with a lot of hope and joy. <laughs> um, but just the intensity of, I think on land work, dry land weights was super new for me. Learning how to lift was um, humbling. And I had to, you know, stay in my own space and think that everybody else had to learn at one point and definitely learn that questions are a good thing. And I had a lot of them to start the season with for sure. Um, I'd honestly say I kind of had the opposite experience. Um, in high school, I lifted on a pretty regular basis, um, but I did not swim nearly as much as I do now. Um, so that was probably the biggest, I, I didn't do doubles in high school either. So I think that's, if I had to nail down one thing that's been the biggest adjustment, it would be moving to doubles. Um, I feel like I've gotten it down now. I've gotten used to it. Uh, my body's adjusted, but um, just the intensity, but I feel like they did a really good job of easing me into it and just making it seem a little bit less overwhelming. Obviously it was hard and there was a lot of learning to be done. Lots of questions asked, but um, just kind of looking back on where I was in shape wise and like experience and what I'm doing now or sets that I've done throughout this year. I mean, I can't imagine telling myself 10 months ago, Oh, you'll be doing this on a regular basis. Like, wow. <laughs> what do you feel like is one of those sets for each of you that, that you can do now that, or that you guys do on a regular basis? I, that you probably... <laughs> I was going to say probably the hardest set that is just, really it's our, one of our training trick ones that makes me just want to like kind of throw up thinking about it is 40 50s and it's we're all wearing suits and it's one you have to go your goal time back half pace or under that time and then it's one easy and then like two minutes or something oh gosh it's just <laughs> it freaks me out thinking about it how my body has never hurt like that and i used to do the stroke set when i was on cardinal which is 2150s. And I was like, oh, if I can do that, I can do this. <laughs> they're they're just completely different things. And even like right now, it's hard to be like, Ella, you can do that. Like you can do those 4050s. And there was a point where you did, and you're gonna do it at least three more times. So it's <laughs> shocking to me every day that I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um I mean, that's definitely one that comes to mind, but I think more of an everyday thing that I've had to get used to is underwaters. Um, I never did that in high school and Ella here can tell you that it's not, <laughs> it's not my strongest suit. They've gotten better like in a race, but practicing unders is not my favorite thing in the world, but they've gotten better. I can hold my breath longer now. The beginning of the year was a little rough. <laughs> how many, how many kicks do you each take off of the wall? In a race, okay, a it's race. it's changed. I've really been trying these past few months to work on it since NCs. Um, at NCs, it probably would be like five. Now it's looking long course like eight or nine. So we're getting there. We're really moving up. I'm not a big counter. So <laughs> <laughs> I go by feel, which it probably, you know, Steph is probably going to listen to this and really cringe that I just said that. But, <laughs> you know. You kind of know where you are in the water and when it needs to stop. So <laughs> <laughs> I love the flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're ready to adapt to, to any situation. Um, all right. I'm going to throw some numbers at our audience right now. Uh, so it's Stephanie Yunker, your coach, um, <clears throat> as you just mentioned, texted me these. So Julia, oh. Dennis, top times for the year. 50 free, 2173, relay 2139, 100 free, 4793, 
relay 47.49. Ella, fastest times of the year. 50 free, 21.89, 21.26 on a relay. 100 free, 47.99, 46.99 on a relay. Split a 144.4 at the end of the 800 free relay as well. So she told me that you traded breaking the Louisville freshman records uh, back and forth. So I'm, I'm, I think Julia ended up with them uh, because her times are one tenth, (laughs) one tenth and less than one tenth faster. Uh, So she ended the year with them, but you guys were both faster than Kelsey Whirl, now Kelsey Dahlia, Mallory Comerford, Gabby Alviero in the 50 and 100 freestyles faster than they were as freshmen. Um, so can you guys tell us a little bit about your relationship and even rivalry, if you want to call it that, um, and just <laughs> just how, how you guys have yeah. developed into the sprinters you are individually, as well as a duo and pushing each other throughout the season? Um. I'll start off by saying I think it's much more of a duo than a rivalry. You know, I can't speak for her. Maybe she is differently. <laughs> but um, just having her in practice every day and knowing that, like, we are so similar in times, it just, like, maybe if I'm having a bad day and she's just kicking my butt, it's like, okay, well, I, I need to be keeping up with her. I should be keeping up with her, vice versa. But also it's just, like, having somebody – we are doing the same races. So like being able to stretch together at a big meet and like listen to music and just kind of being on a similar timeline is a lot of fun. But then there's also like a little bit of competitive spirit in it. Like, you know, we like this past year relays, like I'd go before her like third, fourth leg, whatever. And I don't know, something about like having her waiting at the wall is a big mentality thing, but also like, man, she's pushing me. We, we got to go. So that's lots of fun. I would probably agree with it's a lot more of like a duo kind of friendship than it is a rivalry. It is nice to have someone light that fire under you. Like, oh, why am I going so slow if she's going so fast? Um, but I think, and we talked about this. This is a really nice memory. We... Um, probably like three or four months into school. I want to say like three, cause it was still nice outside. We were walking through our dorm and we we're like, man, it's just so nice to have somebody who does the same thing. And like, we get along pretty well and we swim the same races. It's just nice to have a training partner. And me personally, I've never had someone who swims sprint free that I could race next to during practice. And now it's just kind of a given, like we go next to each other, we race each other and at least in competition to have someone, I think the one of the best parts of the year was around the same time, both of us going that 47 and going 21s and for both of us to do it at the same time. It's just, it's like a rewarding feeling. We know how to have fun, sing a bunch of different songs, do a bunch of little different dances all the time. If we're not in the pool swimming and just to be able to have that mix of like a good fun friendship and also lots of fast swimming where we're on these relays together and we are swimming fast. It's all I could ever wish for in a team. And I'll kind of jump in on that. Like it's exciting to do it for yourself, but I argue that it's even more exciting to see her do it as well. Like it's double the fun to break barriers and have good races. And so it's just extra fun when there's two of us. (laughs) Do you all remember your, did you all know each other before getting to Louisville? And do you remember your first interaction at Louisville? Um, we did not. I know Judy probably, she met some more people on the team before. You can tell that story, but we didn't know each other. And we, I don't remember our first interaction, but this. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll love to hear that. But the first Furthest back I can think is when our pool was being renovated and she drove, we practiced at Lakeside, some clubs, some pool in town, and we were driving there. She was driving the car and the first song she played, (laughs) 
<laughs> was Witch Doctor by Alvin and the Chipmunks. And I said, oh my gosh, I love this song. <laughs> and that was like the first memory I really have of like being with her and being in this car. And some of our teammates, I bet, were in the back. But so and so now we have Monk Mondays where we listen to Chipmunk song in the locker room because of this one day where she played Witch Doctor in the car. <laughs> But only on Mondays, because I think we drove the rest of the team crazy to the point where they had to cut us off. We were only allowed to listen to it on Mondays. <laughs> you get one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How did you meet everyone? Oh, um, just cut. So like a futures meet the summer before we came, I met um, Rob, who's one of our teammates. And then Summer, who is an upcoming freshman. Um, but then... The first time I remember we had, so like we were recruited during COVID, so we couldn't take the official visits like normal, but the year after, once they had like lifted some of the restrictions, um, most of our class came back on a recruiting weekend, which was a lot of fun because we already knew that we were going to be there. So it was less focused on like, do I want to be here? And just more like getting to know everybody. And honestly, I don't really remember remember like any of our interactions there except for like during a photo shoot we like took pictures and stuff and you, you got down on the ground <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know I, I thought that was kind of funny but then I remember right before I came I was just trying to like I was freaking out because I didn't know what to pack and so I texted you and I was like how many like <laughs> workout clothes are you bringing because I know we'll get some but I just remember sending you a snapchat asking about the kind of clothes that I should bring so thanks for helping me out <laughs> what did she say did she give good advice or bad advice um I definitely brought way too many clothes so probably bad advice <laughs> <laughs> I also brought too many clothes so <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, at least, at least you're consistent. <laughs> at least you did. You, you took your own advice or you took, you took the advice you gave someone else. That's good. Uh, um, all right. So you guys spoke to, it's great to do it for yourself. It's better to do it for your team. Um, it, it, it also seemed like Louisville was in a great spot as a team this year. Um, they, they, you know, they kind of built through the year as we're used to seeing them do, I mean, I don't know how closely you had followed Louisville the last five years, but you know, they basically peak every year exactly when they're supposed to. And now you've been a part of that special Albiero sauce. Um, but, uh, oh. <laughs> this, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so this year you, you, you guys got a trophy. Um, you, you helped the Louisville women, uh, get on the podium and get a fourth place finish at NCAAs. Um, how do you feel like even as freshmen, you were able to contribute to that, that team dynamic? Um, I mean, obviously you guys contributed big points on relays, um, and just with your swimming, but kind of outside of that, um, how do you feel like you were able to be, a, be a meaningful part of this team, even though this was your first year on it? I like this question. Um, so I think one of it kind of goes back to something that we say a lot as a joke, and it's just I'm a freshman, I don't know anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brian, you can ask Brian, he'll tell you that we give him that a lot. There, something that they talk about a lot is just the importance of high communication. Um, and so being able to learn from the coaches and older teammates, I think creates like, yes, there's a lot to learn, but because we don't know these things, it adds kind of just some fun and just a reminder, like for the people who are older than us that have been doing it for so long that like, there's still things to learn. There's still fun to be had with it. And so I think that our role beyond swimming was just kind of keeping it light and keeping it motivational. I think that Ella is probably the best verbal what word am I, supporter, I guess, encourager in the pool that I've ever seen. I mean, we can be doing hypoxic work out of breath and Ella will find a way to 
let's go cards. And so just being able to be sort of, I don't know, fun parts of the team, even in the not so fun parts is a big role that we play. I agree. Yeah. I would say the only thing I would add is not even add. Well, I agree with the fact that we just have such great role models on the team and people that we can look up to without having to know everything because somebody's been here and done this before and it was okay for us to be a little naive and be like oh we're just here for a good time and we'll swim fast and I feel like a lot of the younger ones brought that attitude and the older swimmers knew what that was like and knew how to help us out with that and also bring that themselves I also think our NC's group wasn't huge but it was easy for each of us to be each other's number one fan for every individual person having our diver Elsa score for the swimmers to be her number one fan. And for everyone at home, I just think it's so cool to have, while it's not the biggest group, everybody is very like always talking to you always good luck, good job. It's okay. Let's listen to this song. Let's go do this little dance and we have definitely, I think, brought a little, oh, I was going to say the word spunk, but that's so not me. <laughs> um, just, I don't know. I've never just kind of jumped around and been super loose and had so much fun before a race I should be super nervous for. And at least um, Christy Reidenauer and Gabby Albiero, they, oh, to swim on those relays with them and to be able to have fun and go into the locker room and dance around in a circle. Like people aren't walking in and out <laughs> watching us dance to our own music. It's just, that's exactly what the team does is like dance to their own music and kind of just do their own thing without worrying about other people. And it's just oh, it's so much fun. We've used that word so many times, but it, it's really is every practice, all the meets are a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, speaking of those relays that, you know, Louisville had a great showing, uh, of their relays at this NCAAs y'all are now the third fastest tuned free relay in history or te team in history uh, behind Virginia and Stanford. So only two team records are faster than Louisville's in the tuner free relay, Virginia and Stanford, uh, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty hefty accomplishment. Yeah. Especially with t the two freshmen going third and fourth on that relay. Um, what, uh, I mean, can you give me some insight as to what makes those Louisville relays so special for you all? Oh my gosh. I, I think since day one, we kind of had an idea of what that relay was going to look like. And I think all four of us, at least those sprint freestyle relays, have gotten so close. And I mean, it just comes to a point where around ACCs, we knew who our competition was. We knew who we would be racing. And not only did we try and, you know, make it lighthearted, but also like encouraging each other to go race. Like I would, I remember we'd work on our relay starts every day and I would look at them and I'd say, you're racing this team. They're going to, this girl, like, there's an, we'd scream around each other. We, <laughs> this is so, I, I don't want to say embarrassing, but like we would sit and we just scream random teams cheers at each other because we knew like that would help us prepare for the actual meet. But like you would scream us, cheers from other teams at each other. Yes. So <laughs> that's awesome. We, yeah. So, um, we would, you know, yell like the mascots of other teams or do teams cheers because that's what you hear on the block when you're about to go off the relay. And, you know, we'd be yelling other teams, somebody would yell like, go racer, go get them. Like somebody's waiting for you at the wall. And, um, but just things like that, where it's so small, I think it just kind of made us more of one unit than four separate swimmers. And I always said, we know, we knew what we were doing. We knew how to swim and we look up at the record board every day. And I think we knew from, early on that our names would be up there, but it's how fast can we make it and how long is it going to be up there? And 
I also like to remind the seniors, we are only freshmen. Um, well, Gabby's a junior, but we'd be like, just so you know, we're the freshmen and uh, just lighting the fire under you, get a little nervous. Um, we're doing this with you, but we're still young. So we're coming for all your school records, Gabby. We'll have a little bit longer, but it's just uh, so much fun and we get along really well. Absolutely. And another thing, just like, like she said, just, this is a big word, but camaraderie. Did I say it right? Yep. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> just between, <laughs> between the four of us, just, I mean, really makes it kind of like you said, instead of just four separate swims, one after the other, just truly a relay. And it's just such a cool experience to have been also recruited by Gabby and Christy and just see how fast they've been and have the opportunity to s swim with them and the mentality. I'm a freshman, like one, I don't want to mess this up. And two, like shock the world, you know, like I am a freshman. Like I want to, I don't know, do big things. Do as a freshman. Absolutely. <laughs> and just kind of like Ella said, all the fun that we have behind the scenes. Um, we're often found dancing before a relay um, before I think it was the last relay at ACC's. Yeah. Um, we were just, <laughs> I mean, in the middle, there's this big group of girls standing waiting to walk out for the relay. And I mean, we are just in the middle of it dancing and the ACC commissioner, like acapella in a song <laughs> or acapella Joker and the thief. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. And, I mean, we're just doing our own dance and the ACC commissioner walks by and he's like, y'all, y'all are spirited. Somebody said something spirited or having a lot of fun. I'm like, yeah, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right. Two things. One, uh, as soon as you can send me a recording of that acapella Joker and the Thief, oh, yeah. I'm going to need that. But two, because <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> but uh, but two, screaming other teams cheers behind the blocks. That is next level mentality right there. That's the Louisville special sauce. That's, you know, that's that's what we come to the podcast to hear. Uh, yeah. I've never heard that, but that's that's uh that blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, I um when I went to when we went to ACC's, I was saying how um you know, it kind of felt like any other big meet, but the most shocking thing to me was all the yelling before the relays. And maybe not somebody's team specific, but I've never heard people cheering that loud before the relay started. Maybe not when I was on the block, but just before it even started, just everyone screaming, especially like that medley and eight free relay that first night, I feel like there's a lot of yelling. And I, I said, that was the most shocking thing for me was hearing all that noise. And I can imagine it's only going to be worse. And I think after ACC, this was when we really started getting into that mindset of you're going to be in an atmosphere with a lot of noise and a lot of other teams get used to it. That, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing because ACC's is now a combined five day meet as opposed to a separate, you know, two separate four day meets like NCAA's is. What do you think? I'm so sorry. There's a bird clock in here and it chirps at the whole hour. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I didn't even hear it. It, it was just going off. I'm so sorry. Um, Can you repeat that question one more time? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so give me your thoughts on ACCs versus NCAA's. Um, do you have a preference one over the other just for the formatting of the meet? You know, ACCs, you have the five day meet and it's combined versus NCAA's, uh, four day meet women only. So obviously you have a smaller team at NCs, uh, the, the crowd might be different. So, you know, it's just two very different atmospheres. Just in terms of that, do you have a preference of one over the other? Um, I think from, a, well, it's kind of hard to say. I like a lot of things about both. It's really fun to have just the women there at NCs because, I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's fun. To, it's basically just a girl party. And so that's a lot of fun just to be with a small group. But at the same time, uh, we are a combined program and we practice with the men, we do dual meets with the men. And so to have ACCs with them and be able to cheer them on, like right there, watch their relays, do big things up close and personal is a lot of fun. And 
also keeps it a little bit lighter, I'd say. And I don't necessarily have a preference on the length of the meat, but I think there's something to be said for a combined meat and a women's meat. So I don't really know. That wasn't a good answer, but it's a great answer. Uh, yeah, no. I, same thing. I think there's, you know, I wouldn't say cons to both, but they both have things I might like better. Yeah, the length of the meat. I mean, that's over the head. One's during spring break and sees us during spring break, which is super nice. Um, but I just, something about having a good chunk of the team there during a swim meet, I really just, we're something when we're a women's team and that's something special, but when we're together, it's like, I can't even describe how fun it is just to have both teams there and just a little bit more loud, a little bit more fun. You're kind of looking around like, what is going on? I don't know. The men's team's kind of doing something random. Some of the girls might be doing somebody's, yeah, maybe Christie's dancing or something. And there's just always a lot going on. And even if you don't have the best women ACCs, I feel like there's a lot to, there's a lot of people to talk to. I don't want to say distract, but a lot to, like be thankful for and to remind yourself like who you're doing it for and just a lot more cheering to be done than to think like, Oh, if I feel like NC's was just a, I have to do this. We have to get these points a little bit more stress. I feel like just because we had done ACC's higher stakes. Yeah. But, um, both were a lot of fun, but I think I prefer ACC's. Yeah. I, I, uh, Julia, I hear what you're saying about there's you, it's one, it's one atmosphere with the whole team. It's another atmosphere with just the, the women or, you know, the single gendered teams. And, um, I've, I've never really thought about it in that light, but from my perspective as, as media, you know, someone who's not even competing at the meet, I wish they would combine NCAAs and make it that five day format. And I know that would be very different than what it is now, but that's just, that's what I wish would happen just because having been to, I haven't been to ACC's since they combined it, but having been to SEC's, which is the same format, the the five day combined gender, like that meet is, is really special. And I think if you talk to a lot of people at that meet, they'll say that's the best meet in swimming. You know, it's like, I like this, I like this, our conference meet better than NCAAs. And, um, I'm guessing that might be the case. Uh, now that the ACCs are combined, but I digress. Uh, so and, oh, okay. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say like getting, it was fun to cheer on the men, like watching on TV, but it's, it really is cool mm -hmm. to just get to watch more fast swimming in person. Like we did at ACCs. And so it was really cool to go from one super fast, like, I don't know, just nice to watch the men race too, instead of cheering them on from home. Totally. Yeah. I mean, seeing, seeing a fast swim in person is, is much different, especially when you have, like you said, that crowd reaction right after where everyone's just going nuts. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool atmosphere to be a part of if you're listening out there and have never been to a college conference or NCAA meet. I highly recommend you check one out if you're able to next season. All right. Last question. We talked about the Louisville secret sauce. So, and we, we just talked about conference and NCAAs from conference to NCAAs. And we've talked about the team culture and dynamic and how much fun you all have. <clears throat> Do you feel like the coaches emphasized something throughout the year or during that time period? Uh, that made you go so super fast in NCAAs. What's the taper secret? That's what I want to know. Oh, I'll go first. Okay. There's one phrase that I remember specifically that Ooh. Steph had written on the top of our practices in that time, because I mean, true, it, it's difficult just to have that quick turnaround between tapers and just jumping right out of the, I mean, five day meet, we were there for a week and then just getting right back into it to get training up before it comes back down. Um, I think one thing that she had written on all of our practices was don't be an energy vampire. And so <laughs> basically just making sure that we're being uplifting and 
it sounds kind of cheesy, but I think it made all the difference is just making sure that the group of women that were there, they wanted to be there and wanted to support each other. And so just having that reminder, even on the hardest VO2 set two weeks after a tapered meet was just there to remind us that we were in it together. We're doing it together and it's for a purpose. Like we are on a mission and we've got to get through this together, uplifting each other to do it. I'm thinking Arthur saying a lot of words. Um, one, he always, there's two things. He always reminded us that this team, like Louisville is known for doing well at ACCs, but getting even better at NCs. And he was like, people are going to talk about it. It happens. You're a part of this team and it's going to happen to you. And it wasn't like a, is it going to happen? It's you're on this team and there is proof that you are going to succeed. And I think just that mentality of we have already gotten to this point. We have a few more weeks and everyone has done it before us. We like, I had watched, People I knew on this team do it before me. So it was just a little confidence booster knowing like the reputation this team has and the experience the coaches have. Uh, the word, and I mean, I feel like he might know what I'm about to say. Arthur, I mean, on a daily basis says this, but probably more so often in between ACCs and NCs was freedom. Oh man, that's such a, it, it like really just goes all year, but, um, just that you guys feel because that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps over here, but, um, <laughs> he, um, just that, yes, it's for the team, but we have nothing to lose. Like it doesn't matter. And I'm sure all my club coaches have said this too, like n- paper doesn't swim. Oh, that was a good one. He said paper does not swim. And whatever is written down is not guaranteed. And I think that was just a good reminder to have all the time. And I love the phrase paper can't swim because it really can. And even throughout the season, we proved that in plenty of dual meets and other meets, but between ACCs and NCs, I think that was a really important ideal that we stressed a lot. And building on that, like I vividly remember one Saturday afternoon practice or Saturday morning practice we were doing efforts off the block less than a week out from the meet. And I just, I did not feel good. I was really, I mean, it just really made me super nervous because I mean, I, I didn't feel good and I was upset and just talking to Arthur and having him remind me like not a, Oh, we, we tend to do well better or like we tend to build at the end of the season. Like people sometimes get better, but uh, no, you will get better. You've put in the work just having him put that confidence in me helped me have confidence in myself and feel better and more calm before NCs. So taper is all about saying the right words. It's not Absolutely. about, it's not about <laughs> the work you do. It's not about the rest you get. It's about the words. That's my takeaway from this conversation. Yeah, I trust them. So whatever they say to do, I just kind of, oh, okay, that's really hard. But I I believe it. We're just freshmen. (laughs) (laughs) That is such a perfect way to to wrap this up. Um, Okay, last thing. Have you guys seen the TV show, What We Do in the Shadows? I have not. Okay, that's fine. I'm just curious if Stephanie was referencing that there's it's about vampires and there's an energy vampire in it and they the 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 energy vampire like sucks the sucks <laughs> the energy out of people like just by being around them um and so that's i was just curious if if that was uh <laughs> what that was referencing anyway ella julia thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and chat with us. It was great getting you on the podcast and getting your insight on uh, the Louisville ways and your freshman season. Any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? You're thinking of something witty. Oh, no, I was trying. I was trying. Um, I just thank you for having us. It was lots of fun. The only thing in my head right now is the question about the dog Dog, speaking. Can you ask the question and we can leave the audience with that? 
Yeah, Tee us I up. Think that's a wonderful idea. Um, shout out Nick Zorn. Nick Zorn, <laughs> yes, awesome coach. Um, he asked me today, he said, um, you're walking down the street this day and age, you're normal, clear-minded, and you see a dog walking along the street and it looks at you and it says, no one will believe you and just keeps on walking. Do you think you're crazy or do you believe the dog actually spoke to you? Listen. Okay, yep, part of God. <laughs> Listeners, we're going to leave you with that. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.